T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Flight control, we have no concerns. Twelve years ago, we discovered the synergy between green roofs and solar panels. Here's a picture of me on the EPA Region 8 headquarters in downtown Denver, Colorado. Behind me, you see a solar panel array. And in front of me is a series of plants that I'm taking data on. These plants um, ended up benefiting from the solar array to the point where we had to evaluate it very closely. So we put a whole bunch of sensors under that solar array and found out that there were really three things that influenced the success of those plants. It was cooler under the solar panels in the summer, warmer in the winter. It was also less wind. And of course, there's a lot less sunlight. Not Plants don't need 100% of the sunlight all day long. So they thrived under there. We also found out that the panels benefited from the fact that the plants were there. Solar panels operate most efficiently at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And the, the rooftops are typically up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Plants can't survive those conditions. So they evaporatively cool the air around the solar panels and end up providing um, some cooling benefit to the panels so they operate mo more efficiently. Now, I'm studying drought tolerant native and non-native plants uh, on that green roof, but I wanna take this a little bit further. I wanna substitute those plants for food crops. So this is a term called rooftop agrivoltaics. That's literally the combination of agriculture and photovoltaics. Photovoltaics is another term for solar panels. So I want you to say it with me. Rooftop agrivoltaics. That's literally growing food under solar panels on top of buildings. We already know that agrivoltaics work on the ground, in farm fields. So as green roof researchers, we call that at grade, since we're used to being up in, in higher elevation. So here's a picture of some research my colleague, Dr. Mark Uchansky at Colorado State University has performed the past couple of years. He evaluated food crops under solar panels in an adjacent full sun areas. And he found relatively equal yield under the panels and in full sun. Interestingly though, uh, foliage crops such as lettuce ended up having slightly larger leaves under solar panels. And that's because the plants themselves were growing and trying to reach more sunlight. So in theory, we might end up with more marketable produce under solar panels. Now I wanna take this further, growing in agrivoltaic systems on the ground is one thing. It's much more extreme up on rooftops. So here's a picture of my graduate student, Thomas Hickey. He's collecting data in green roof systems under solar panels. This past summer, he did a pilot study where he screened crops of all kinds and actually native plants of all kinds, which are, of course, food crops for pollinators. And he found some really interesting results. So the water limiting environment of green roof systems meant that the plants out in full sun actually didn't, didn't survive. It was only the crops grown under solar panels that actually uh, um, produced. So you might be wondering, why am I so interested in rooftop agrivoltaics? Well, besides the fact that I'm a green roof researcher, so <laughs> that, that's my, my primary area of expertise. However, I'm really convinced that rooftops are the place that we need to be looking at for growing food. Half of our world population lives in urban areas already. By mid-century, 
two-thirds of our population will be living in urban areas. All those people eat, and very little ground is available for growing food on the ground or at grade. So I really want to push for producing food in the only available space remaining, rooftops. So in 2017, I was one of the technical advisors for the Green Roof Ordinance that occurred for the city and county of Denver. It passed. And one of the things we did was a rough analysis of how many low slope, or what looks like flat, rooftops there are in the city and county of Denver. We found out it's about 5,000 acres. That's a lot of space. Imagine if just 20% of that area, 1,000 acres, could be used for rooftop agrivoltaics. And also consider a, a modest yield of about 5,000 pounds per acre over 1,000 acres. That's 5 million pounds of food that can be grown in just the city and county of Denver. Imagine how many households that can, can feed. Also, there's another aspect. I have this great quote here, and I'll read it for you. Urban spaces are pivotal nodes of the global ecosystem. And it is in cities where the majority of humans and influential decision makers experience nature. So while growing food crops isn't exactly nature, it's on the way to nature and a lot more alive than a black membrane rooftop. So imagine if people could experience the benefits of being around plants even more in their rooftop environments nearby. So if you wanna help me uh, lead a revolution in rooftop agrivoltaics, I have four things that you can do today. So the first thing you can do is educate yourself on green roofs. Go to greenroofs.org. That's a website by the nonprofit Green Roofs for Healthy Cities. Um, you can also go contact your local government. So your local government, ask them, what do you do to support rooftop agrivoltaics? You might have to do a little bit of defining for them because they may not know what that means. But you can ask them three separate things. You can ask them, what do you do to support green roof installations? What do you do to support rooftop solar installations? And what do you do to support a local food system? You can also contact your energy provider. They are in control of what renewable energy sources are, are invested in in their area. And finally, you can seek out and buy local food. Go to your local farmer's market. Go to your local grocery store and ask for lo local food sources. We need to support these local food sources, as well as rooftop solar, as well as green roof development in order to get to the larger goal of rooftop agrivoltaics. Thank you.